Hello, John Burley here. I hope you guys are having a great day. I want to talk about risk today, just right up front, market risk. See, I've seen a lot of investors, some who are really knowledgeable, men and women, who I have a lot of respect for, who have had a lot of stuff go wrong and they're not really understanding why. Part of it is they just, they've been in the game too short to period of time. You know, if you haven't been around for a while, you're not really aware of what the risks are out there. And when things are going good, we like to pretend there is no risk, but the reality there is. So there's seven core risks that we always need to be aware of when we're doing real estate investing. You know, the first thing is just the market risk. Market risk is the number one risk. You know, markets go up and markets go down. And when they're going up, everybody forgets they don't go down. I started doing this in the late 1970s. So I've seen in the United States five full cycles. That would be where we go through normal. We go through equity markets trend upwards and we go through growth. We go through prosperity and then we have a recessionary and then a depressionary and then growth, prosperity, recession over and over and over and over again. And each and every time, although the severity varies, each and every time these happen over and over and over again, it is always not if the market's going to go down, it's when and then how much. But it's always going to go down. And people just forget that. So the first one is market risk. When I'm investing, I look at where I am in the market. And where it's going to be. And right now, where we're at, most markets, so we've gone through some good growth, some good prosperity. In most markets, we're in very, very soft, sometimes even sideways recession with very, very low, what would be the depression, the end, the ending to the cycle being in most markets. Um, a lot of reasons for that. We're not in 2008, supply and demand, et cetera. We can go on for a long time. But the first thing is to be aware of market risk. Know where the market is, what it's doing. For most of us right now, the markets have a possibility to go down 10 to 20%. More likely, they're going to go sideways to down 10%. And is the extreme out there? Yeah, but it's such a small extreme that I don't see it coming. So market risk is there. Next one is interest rate risk. Interest rate risk affects everything, not just the real estate. Because when the interest rates go up, it affects everybody's money. Because most people are carrying debt. So I've got to be aware of interest rate risk where we're at. Historically, right now, in the six and a half ish range that we're bouncing around, we are actually still below normal historicals. However, if you've been in the game for, you know, less than five years, it's like, oh my God, these rates are high. If you start, when I started, I saw interest rates at 18.6%. This is really, really low. And literally, it wasn't until 93 that rates dropped below 10%. And there was a couple of government programs that went 9.75. So, Interest rate to risk, you got to be aware of all time. The next thing is the e economy and the economic risk. I mean, we're clearly, most of the country right now, clearly we're in a recession. Um, we're having high, high, high inflation. And the economy's not driving well. It's not doing well. Um, and so because of that, that is going to affect everything that we pay for. So we're going to pay more for stuff. Um, and we're going to have residents who are more challenged to pay. Um, and if we're doing it on a, a short-term game that we're doing, then again, it's still there. So that one. The next one we look at it is, this is, and this is the newer risk. I haven't seen this literally since the early 80s, but we have to look now at material and labor risk. Um, it is harder and harder and costs more and more to get renovations and rehabs and that stuff done. So certainly, and getting the people out to do it. So that cost has gone up substantially. That cost has gone up way more than inflation has in the last couple of years. We're playing significantly more for those. So I've got to factor that risk into any project I do that's going to require rehab. And I am finding more and more right now that most properties, there's not substantial equity picked up from the rehab unless it's what you do and you're very good specialist at. For most people, that better off just buying it after somebody else rehabbed it because they're overpaying right now. Next thing we got to look at is our niche. You know, there, there's three core niches out there, guys. You know, the first one is the short term, the quick cash, you know, whether that's an assignment, whether that's a rehab, you know, whether it's, you know, a wholesaler, there's all these different genres around it, but it's the same niche is short term. So we need to really be sure that we have the knowledge to understand the short term and how these risks affect because the shorter your timeline for your transaction, the bigger the risks are. You know, so if you're holding for 30 years, the yeah, market goes down 10%, pfft, who cares? You're trying to flip it in 30 days, market goes down 10%, boy, unless you bought right following old school rules, not new rules, you're in trouble. So understand your niche. So the first one is, you know, the short term, the quick cash niche. Second one, the buy and hold long term rentals. You know, where you are in that cycle, um, how, how much you're you're what you're providing is needed, et cetera. And then the other one, the one we do primarily is just cash flow news. We're providing long, long-term, 10 to 30-year owner financing, depending on the state we're working in, and giving the people the ability to own the home. 
um, and, and get everything good that comes along with that. So understanding that. The next thing, and this is this has always been there, but it's certainly far more in the last couple of years. It's certainly in a post-COVID world. You need to understand what the po- political, the regulatory, and the government situation is where you're at. You know, and, and just complaining about it doesn't fix it. You need to acknowledge where it is. And yes, I do know some people who are really, really serious about this business who literally have decided to invest in other areas. And if they're doing it large, that means they relocate. Because if your portfolio is out of the area, you have slippage. I, and don't deny it because that's just like denial 101. You, you know, it just doesn't work. So I need to know what's going on in the government. What are they doing in regards to rent control? What are they doing in regards to uh, source of funds control and how I can maneuver within that environment? Being in a highly regulated, a anti-landlord environment isn't necessarily bad because it's running a lot of competition away. We just need to know how to frame ourselves there. So we need to not be in denial about it. Again, this is the six of the seven risks. And the last risk is really just all about us. Our own biases, our own personal psychology, our own emotions. What are we not doing that we should be doing? What activities should we be taking that we're not taking? How should we be tweaking, fixing, and adjusting that we're not doing? So understanding our own psychology and emotions. So again, know the risk. There's seven primary risks that we need to look at as a real estate investor. First one, market risk. Second one, interest rate risk. Third one, the, the economy, the economic risk and how it affects our residents, our buyers. Uh, the fourth one is the material and labor risk. Those are a new risk we have to factor in way more than before because stuff has gone way, way up and some stuff you can't get right away. So you need to factor that all in. Next one is your knowledge of the niche that you're in. There's three niches. Know which one you're doing clearly before you buy, not after. Next one, of course, is understanding the political environment, understanding the regulatory environment, understanding the government, because those are factoring in more and more and more and more. And the trend certainly is we're going to continue with this, not get less, regardless of who's elected into what office. And, and then the last one is your own biases, your own personal psychology, your own emotion. The more we dive in and understand how we look at risk and pretend it's not there, versus acknowledge and embrace it, the more successful we are. So be aware of the risks that are out there. Understand them. Hey, look, if you like what you're hearing here, follow me on Instagram at john.burley. Um, certainly hop over to Facebook, join the John Burley Real Estate Investors Group here on YouTube. Like, comment, subscribe, and then go to johnburley.com. We've got free tools for you there and information about upcoming events and what's going on in our world. We post up there all the time, so check it out. So again, Instagram, john.burley, John Burley Real Estate Group, and Facebook, johnburley.com here on YouTube, and johnburley.com for all the information you need. This is John Burley saying, be aware of the risk and then embrace it. Thank you, and God bless.